Hi YouTube, it's Rooney and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I got accepted into the University of Calgary. This video is going to be broken up into many chapters, so if you want to see just a particular part, you can skip to that part, but I highly recommend watching the whole video because I go through the whole process and ultimately what led to me deciding to not go there anymore. All right, the first part is I'm going to be talking about the admissions process. So I applied for early admission in November of last year, so 2022. And I still can't believe like I got in. <laughs> uh, just because I thought like for me, the University of Calgary was like the University of Waterloo for me. Like it was that prestigious school that I never thought I could get into. So to get into it was really incredible and amazing. I believe it was Remembrance Day weekend that I applied to not only the University of Calgary, but four other universities. So I I will also be making a separate video about just like ultimately which university I picked out of those four. So stay tuned for that video. But right now let's focus on the University of Calgary. So to apply, you just go to ucalgary.com, find the apply button, fill out all your information. And then when you're applying, you get to pick two programs one which is like your first choice program and the second one is your backup in case you don't get into your first choice so my first choice was computer science i got in so yay <laughs> uh my second choice was psychology because i was doing grade 12 psychology and i was really like invested in it i'm glad i didn't like pursue that because psychology is a lot more complicated than you may think it's not all easy um but it was so interesting to me so i thought i could go into that but no, <laughs> now in hindsight, looking back, I don't want to do psychology. I really want to do computer science though. So I'm glad I got into my first choice. So to when you're also applying for this, for admission, you have to send your transcript. And I believe that's it. After you fill out your contact information, all that stuff, your address, your phone number, your emergency contacts, blah, 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 your transcript. And that's pretty much it. And this is early condition, conditional um, admission. So your grade 12 transcript will not be fully done by then, right? So I applied in November. So I really only had like grade 11. So basically I just submitted my grade 11 grades on my transcript because I wasn't even done one full semester of grade 12 yet. So the admissions fee. The admissions fee for the U of, University of Calgary is $125. That by far was the most amount of admissions like fees that I had to pay to apply to a school. Um, that's how they get you, <laughs> is those gosh darn admissions fees. Uh, the other four schools were not nearly as much, but I did look at the University of Waterloo. I believe it was like $300 or something crazy. So it's definitely not the most expensive, but $125, it's non-refundable. You're not getting that money back, even if they reject you, even if you don't choose to go there, you're never getting that money back. So yeah. Let's talk about conditional offer. So remember, I applied in November of 2022. A couple weeks later in December, on December 9th, I got my conditional offer of acceptance. I'll put it up somewhere on the screen here. Don't know where, but I'll put it up. <laughs> so conditional acceptance means that since I applied early and since I only gave them my grade 11 grades, which were really great, they conditionally accepted me on those grade 11 grades. They did not accept me for my grade 12 grades because I haven't finished grade 12 yet. So at the end of the year, like June to like July, you have time to send them a grade 12 final transcript. And then that is basically when they accept you or deny you. <laughs> um, but chances are, if you got conditionally accepted, then, and you keep your grades up, then you're you're fine. You're going to stay in. You're, they're not going to reject you. Don't worry about that. You might be wondering, why should I apply early? This is why. And this is why I always say apply early to any university you want to go to because of entrance scholarships. So entrance scholarships are only given to those who are conditionally admitted. And entrance scholarships, I talk a little bit about them in my scholarship video, so go check that out afterwards. But basically what you need to know is that they are giving you money to go to their school. So if you don't attend their university, you're not keeping that money, basically. 
Um, it also is the automatic, so you don't have to apply for them. They just, depending on your, your transcript, they're going to award you it. There's different amounts of scholarships you can get. I got the highest one. I know, crazy. <laughs> $5,000, I think it was called the President's Choice Scholarship. Um, obviously, I turned that down, sadly, but it was really cool. But again, I'll talk about that in a different video and why I think it's a scam. But what you need to know is that, yes, you're not doing anything in return, right? They're basically paying you to go to their school. But you do have to be a full-time student. You have to apply for a certain amount of courses. And for me, it was like 15 credit hours per term, which is basically like taking five courses per term, meaning I would have no social life. So I didn't do that. So just be aware that entrance scholarships aren't always everything. Okay, now let's move on to the step about accepting your offer. To accept your offer, your conditional offer, you have a certain deadline to do it. I think for me it was like May 31st. Yeah, I waited till the last day because I was a little, eh, that's a lot of money. What I'm talking about is that it's not free to accept your offer. So remember that $125 that you paid for the admissions fee? That is just the admissions fee. It doesn't go towards your tuition if you get in or anything like that. But when you accept your conditional offer in the student center, you have to pay a $500 deposit. Non-refundable deposit, that is. So I lost that money. Yay for me. So that basically confirms your seat at the University of Calgary after that. Yeah. I don't know what happens if, let's say, in June when you submit your final transcript and they deny you it says non-refundable so i'm guessing you don't get that money back anyway good luck guys so again 500 hundred dollar non-refundable deposit to confirm your seat in the university of calgary otherwise your admissions is canceled after that deadline and you're basically back to square one and you can apply again but yeah this section's a little fun it's called gifts. <laughs> um, one thing that I really enjoyed that none of the other universities did when I applied to them was University of Calgary kept sending me gifts in the mail. They sent me like little postcards, sent me newsletters, sent, and by far they had the best communication of any other university. They were sending me emails every week, newsletters being like, this is an upcoming deadline, apply for housing, how to do that stuff. Yeah. So if I have time, I'll put a picture of like postcards I got was really cool like it really made them stand out against all the other universities and i i live two provinces over in manitoba so i think like for them to pay that money to ship those postcards to me like that just it made my heart warm it was like wow i'm wanted not for long let's talk about applying for scholarships now my biggest regret yes i applied early but i did not apply early enough i wish i applied like as soon as grade 12 started so my biggest regret is to not is that i did not apply for the prestige scholar award this is like a twenty thousand dollar scholarship that is given to conditionally admitted students and it's just my biggest regret and you get that you apply for that through the student center again which we will get to don't worry so yeah apply for scholarships that is one of the um, scholarships that you have to apply for it's not automatic it's not like entrance scholarships shoot your shot you know like what if you do win you know even if you don't it's just a little fraction of time wasted out of your life but if you did win that little fraction of time basically made your future so apply early all right let's talk a little bit about this student center that i keep talking about so again they will send you an email it's super straightforward how to like make one and this student center is like the coolest thing ever you can apply for courses apply for scholarships you can see your um, grades you can see your you know financial stuff you can basically do everything there it's really cool um, it's just like a hub for everything so get on that straight away as soon as you're conditionally offered and accepted it if you want to go there do it. Another scholarship though that I didn't mention before was the high school awards, which I believe are also, well, you do apply for it through the student center, but it is also a little bit like an entrance scholarship because they do look at your transcript. So apply for that also. Now let's talk about housing. This is kind of where, 
like what, what's that saying the straw that broke the camel's back or something like this is where i started to think hey this university is not for me so for all new students all first year students they are guaranteed residence if they apply to housing before a certain date for me it was may 1st so that's exactly what i did and again yet another reason to apply early right if you're not conditionally admitted you're not going to know about this stuff they're not going to give you um, this information and you're not going to be able to apply for housing before you even get into the university right applying for housing is not through the student center i know i said all that stuff about the student center before but a completely different website not as great looking if i'm being honest you can find it on the university website housing portal brings you there make an account and get this you have to pay another fifty dollars for an application fee they're really sucking you dry before you even go there um so that's an application fee again non-refundable even if you turn if they turn you down you're not getting that money back yeah and then you get to basically look at a bunch of different housing options available they have all types of rooms single double um, triple <laughs> quadruple like they have so many different types of rooms um, and you can also find roommates through that portal it's really funny because you have to make a little profile if you're finding roommates you make a little profile by yourself being like hey these are my interests hey i'm not okay with you smoking hey i'm not this i'm not that it's really funny it's like a dating profile but for college students it's hilarious so for me i wanted a room a double room in the yanama yam i can't say this word yamaha hall with a roommate but sure enough when it came to may 1st i got an email back and it said that i did not get get my room preference this is where i was talking about that camel thing um so they when you're applying for housing you get like five preferences I had five, five preferences. On the email, it said, sure enough, it said this, and I quote, that only 10% of new students actually get their preferences of choice. And it's like, why make us do that if you're not going to give us that? I get it. Like, I'm happy for those 10%, but bro. What made me more frustrated, though, is that all of my preferences, five of them, they make you choose five different preferences. I got zero of them. Zero. You know what I got with? What I got? I got just like a regular dorm room. Um, I'll put a picture of that. Yeah, this is what I wanted. This is what I got. And most likely, it's what you're going to get to because it seems like your preferences don't even matter. I don't know why. They just don't matter. I also tried, there's like these living groups. So there's like a scholar advantage group. And I thought I was like smart enough to be a part of that. And this is what I'm talking about, the um, prestige scholar award, all those People who win that, they get to be a part of that group. But there are special cases where if you really want it badly enough, you can just email them and be like, hey, this is why I fit this group. Put me in it. I did that. Zero um, communication back, zero confirmation, zero anything. No one told me anything if I got in or not. It's just all a blur. And now that my rant is over, let's talk about even more money that you have to pay. And by the way, these like... Um, housing like offers were rolling around like may 10th i think they gave me my housing offer and i was frustrated i was like i'm definitely not going to university of calgary now they give you a deadline to may 25th to pay get this a thousand dollar deposit and this is again non-refundable but at least this goes towards your housing fees so it kind of cuts off that little bit that you have to pay for that first month. By this time, I had already kissed my dreams of attending the University of Calgary. Goodbye. So I did not pay that $1,000 deposit because I was like, you already sucked me dry of $500 of um, $125. Maybe I'm just a cheapskate, but bro, I'm not paying that. Now let's talk about registration. This, you thought housing was frustrating. This was even more frustrating for me. So it opens in May, the same time around housing time. Um, you apply through the student center, you apply for courses, you put them in your shopping cart or whatever, and you click submit. Here's the thing, the conditional, this is where we go back to applying early is good. Those conditional um, accepted offers for those students, they get to apply for courses earlier. So it kind of leaves the rest of us 
like yes i did apply early but depending on like what exact day down to the date of how early you applied that's how early you get to register so by the time i got into the portal i made all my my the courses i needed for my major i tell you for my computer science major i click submit and literally like every single course is full or i'm on the wait list and it's just like even the courses that i need for my major to be filled they were denied me and i was like how are you going to do this like how am i supposed to go there if the courses aren't even working like what i got accepted into the computer science program at university of calgary yet i got into zero of their courses make it make sense so that was just not it for me another thing was when you're registering you can do these like advising sessions through zoom you can apply for them online and i did that i did two of them both of them did not have the best experience it felt like those people which i will not mention first of all they're students they're not like counselors they're they're just they're students in like upper years and just giving you advice but the thing that was like i took away as rude was they did they valued their time a lot so they did not really give me time to ask questions they just told me to screen share what my current layout was and they told me if i had everything if i had registered for all the courses all the correct courses for the first year of my degree they said yes i asked maybe two questions out of my 10 questions and then and by the way these appointments are really short they're about 30 minutes long so it goes by like this especially if there's technical difficulties they ain't staying around past like i think i had mine at 5 to 5 30 it was 5 31 and she was out of there she did not like I was midway through a sentence. She said, goodbye. Maybe she had a different appointment, but that wasn't really helpful. But there are guides on the University of Calgary website to tell you exactly how to plan your degree. So do that. Anyway, this video is getting way too long. So if you guys want a whole separate video about how baloney this registration process is, let me know. I will make a video if you guys want it. So let me know in the comments below. Also, this is just your friendly reminder to leave a like and subscribe if you're really enjoying this video, if you're finding it helpful. And if you have any more questions, leave them in the comment below because I will answer them. I'm thinking about making a Q&A soon. So yeah, do that. And maybe in that video, I'll go over a little more about the cost of housing, meal plans, which I just realized I didn't even put in here. Oh my God, if you're living for the first year, um, if you're living in on campus, you have to pay for a meal plan. Doesn't matter if you're going to use it or not. You have to pay for it. So that's another piece of baloney. And those things are thousands of dollars and expensive. So good luck with that. We're coming to an end here. So overall, I would say that if you really want to go to the University of Calgary, do it. If you have the money to do it, do it. If you don't, apply for scholarships. Apply early. Yes. If you have a dream do it. I had a dream to go there. Didn't really work out for me. It was way too expensive and just way too much drama and struggle for months on months and months. And so I just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm good. So if you are planning to attend the University of Calgary, be forewarned. It's brutal out here. <laughs> good luck. I hope the best for you. I hope you get in. I hope everything works out for you. And I hope this video helped you get in all right that does it for this monstrosity of video it went on way too long and i feel like i didn't even answer enough questions so if you want a part two leave in the comments down below tell me all your questions that you have for me and i will answer it in another video in a q a don't forget to leave a like subscribe and ring that notification bell so then next time when i post a video you will be notified all right that's it for now bye It's gonna be hard to edit this video.